This will be a video to show the replacement of my factory 2013 Tundra nav unit with the 10.1 Android uh, head unit from Joying. So this will be some voiceover time and some live recording. First thing is to remove the cup holder from the lower part of the dash. A couple tabs um, on the sides you push to remove that and then you take out the next uh, section and some screws, so we'll go through that. So you have to remove the inner inner piece after you remove the cup holder, and it has these catches. It has these catches at the top, so you push down on on the top to get it to go past these catches here. Okay, for completeness, I know it's shown other other videos but to, to remove the cup holder assembly you got to remove the four screws oops covering up the light there this bolt here oops, there we go. and then it's hard to see but there's two more oops, screws so a total of four of the black screws Phillips head and then one ten millimeter um, in here, and then this whole assembly pops out. You got to pry it out, and then uh, you can start on the upper sections, which also just pry out. The other thing I uh, did to kind of help this process, so I could pull out the the uh, trim around the dash here is I loosened this bolt down here. I don't have the remaining steps to remove the radio on video, but once you get the AC panel off, there'll be four screws, two in the front and two that are recessed. Remove all of those and then the radio is free to be pulled out. You'll have to give it a tug to get, get the snaps to release and then you can unhook the harnesses. Before I mount up the uh, joying unit, I just do a little side-by-side -side comparison from the original radio or head unit, I guess. But it... okay, so now we have the OEM brackets on the on the aftermarket radio, and you can see my uh, um, accessory heat sinks I added after. Doing a little testing and felt how warm the heat sink on the back got, I decided to add some heat sinking uh, to the top. So those are stick on heat sinks, and I'll put a link in the description for uh, how to get those off Amazon. Okay, uh, <clears throat> before I put the radio in, I ordered a USB insert to fit into this one of these blanks that was here so I'll be able to get the the two extra USB ports out of the back of the radio so fish those wires through and, and then we get to push that in hopefully that's the right way it seems like this is happier to be in one direction than the other uh, it's not working so I'm measuring the USB insert and the opening. The opening was about a millimeter and a half narrower or shorter or whatever than the insert. So it looked like uh, cutting out or I basically used a utility knife to scrape out about that much half on top, half on bottom of the plastic and was able to get that USB to fit. I'll put a link to that in the description so you know what not to buy. So the things that didn't come with the harness, if I can find them here real quick. Um, an adapter for the USB on the factory USB. Let's see. Where... Oh, yeah. So this is the adapter I ordered separately for the USB. And that'll match up to the radio. Then on the back of the unit, which has the Toyota mounts on it, 
So on the back of the unit, there's another adapter. The Toyota GPS antenna to the head unit antenna. Other than that, I get what you get. And uh, Joey made me a harness, or sent me a harness specifically, um, to get my backup camera to work. This little sing single connector, single wire plug. So, it was nice of them. And it worked, I already checked that out. I've added some foam in the back here to try to keep wires from bang banging around and rattling, heat rattles. Got my mic mount here. And uh, that, that'll plug into the back of the unit. So, it's time to button it up. I can't do it with one hand, so. All right, the unit is in. Haven't driven the vehicle yet <clears throat> with it plugged in, but just turning it on and trying to set it up. I guess the only drawback I see so far is the gap up here. I can't get it to engage the clips. Um, so no matter what I try to do, it just doesn't seem to want to line up with the clips, which I can't see. <laughs> So I guess I'll I'll live with that. I've got it mounted with the factory uh, radio mount, so I'm, it's very it's very secure. It's, the bottom clips uh, worked fine. Get some light on the subject here. So that part worked good. That fits fits nicely. Um, USB. Plugs are in are good. Um, seems to work well. Responsive. Audio sounds so much better than the stock unit. It's uh, worthwhile in and in of itself. Okay, well now we're going to try it and see how long it takes to get to the reverse camera. I'm in reverse. There you go. I have a strobing reverse light. That's what's causing that flicker. It's not the not the unit or the camera. So anyway, this is uh, I guess a quick way to see the unit in action. <clears throat> or home. Uh, boy, my sorry about the glare. <laughs> it's horrible. There we go. We go off to the side. I'm not getting quite as <clears throat> the direct <clears throat> light. There we go. So I turned on the headlights and that uh, reduced the brightness and that helped uh, quite a bit. So anyway, this is what the screens look like. Um, I'm going to go into settings, connect to the OBD2. Look at that. This is OBD Fusion. This is uh, the first screen that I've connected up. Unfortunately, it takes quite a few presses to get things going. I haven't improved that yet. I hope to get the So this is how I've started with my screens, and then when I hook up Android Auto, the map, I, I put the map up in this um, open area here. I guess we can look at that. So this is an older phone. When I plugged in the USB connector, the camera stopped recording, so I'll have to do this voiceover. Yeah, like I said, my f phone I was using is an older, has an older Android, which doesn't meet the requirements for wireless Android Auto. Join told me that Android 11 and 5G networking, as well as 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi is required for wireless Android Auto. And I hope to confirm that soon. Just a few more screens, so now I'm back, back to Android Auto mode. Um, so, 
gives you an idea of, uh, I guess, the responsiveness. Spotify. My phone. I don't use playbooks or whatever that is. So. When uh, we were on our latest trip and had navigation running, I, the map would show up up in, the, in this open area. So, um, this is what the screen looks like. Um, the fit, I think I talked about the fit. You know, you can kind of see the gap there. It's just, you can kind of stick it. So, I, I don't know if others have installed that differently. But I don't know if I could change the bracket, the factory brackets at all. But the bottom integrates quite nicely. I'm pretty happy with that. It doesn't have a lot of uh, vibration noise. When we had some uh, rough roads, it kind of blended in with the other creeks. So, pretty happy with this unit.